My name's Paul, Paul from Ness, and I, I'm from Leeds, I'm from Seacroft. Eric Clapton played a concert at um, Birmingham University. He came out with this absolute tirade of racist abuse. It's, it's all documented, it's all out there. What happened immediately after that gig was that Roger Huddle and Red Saunders in London wrote um, a letter to the music press which was saying, who shot the sheriff, Eric? It sure as hell wasn't you. But in Leeds, I remember seeing in one of the papers, somebody pointed out to me, said, have you seen this letter? It was a really positive, life-affirming letter. So me and a couple of mates, we got in touch to see what we could do. That first carnival, which Rock Against Racism organised in conjunction with the Anti-Nazi League in Victoria Park in the east end of London, you, you suddenly realised that there were thousands and thousands and thousands of people descending on London. The excitement of it, just this realisation that you could do, that you could change things, that you could actually make a difference was phenomenal and that stayed with me. To this day, I still believe that you can change things. We started the Leeds Rockings Racing Club in 1978. We started Leeds Rockings Racing Club purely out of enthusiasm and a desire to fight back against what was happening. We were also really lucky in Leeds that we had a lot of good bands that became really good friends of ours, like the Mekons and the Gang of Four. They were practically the Rockings Racing Club house bands and Delta Five, who were Kirk Cobain's favourite band, they formed as a result of the Leeds Rare Club. Everybody was forming bands and they all played there because it was, we charged very little to get in. We weren't out to make money, we were out there to, to fight our corner, to fight for a cause. So if you actually look at the, the, the tickets or the posters that we produced, you'll see that there were like 50p, 30p or something to get in. We were the most successful. London didn't even do what we did, but we didn't really give them any money either. My name is Hall Harriet. My band was called Bedesian and we'd rehearsed and we were a reggae band and we felt it was a good time to get on the road. And that was one of the, the scenes that allowed us to perform. Before Rock Against Racism, our band, just starting out, were doing gigs, small pubs, basically. Uh, it was difficult to get the gigs ourselves because we were young, we were 17. And we eventually hooked up with other bands and got contacts. My name's Tony Baker and I used to be in a band called Household Name which was formed in the early 80s. There was always the Rock Against Racism Club that was down at the Poly, so that was going on every week. We played at the, uh, the carnival in 81. We played on the back of a lorry that set off from Woodhouse Moor and then travelled, snaked its way through Leeds, ending up at Hot Newton Park. There's definitely that idea of sharing things. People shared equipment, the same guitars, same drums. They'd also sometimes swap personnel as well. We had banners which we went down Leeds Market and bought this really colourful cloth that just said Rock Against Racism. My favourite, All Power to the Imagination, that was the best one. It was really brightly coloured, we used colour a lot. We made our own posters, we, we, you just did everything yourself. And I, to be honest now, I, looking back on it, I can't even remember how we did it. I mean, I can't even remember how we put these gigs on, but we did. We'd, we'd theme things, so we'd bring things in. If anything happened, we'd try and bring it in. And we'd have speeches between the acts whatever people wanted to talk about, really. The specials were headlining at the carnival. There's also Aswad, Misty and Roots and the Au Pairs. The audience at the carnival was, was very mixed. I think at previous ones it probably been predominantly white. At the time of the actual event, there was definitely a kind of feeling that there was this sort of harmony. When I think of that day, that march and the gig that took place, there were the specials and I just remember moving along this crowd and pushing through under the feet of people to get to the front. Oh my God, you don't see these people, you see them on top of the pops, on TV and they were just live and direct in front of me and I was, I, I, I remember screaming in like, Terry! And I was like, oh my God, there was so much excitement and so much energy in that space in Potter Newton Park, it was amazing. So in terms of a, of a festival, this was a park, it, you know, people just walked into it, uh, it was open to everybody and it was certainly though very full, there's a lot of people here and the atmosphere was great. For me, the Rock Against Racism concert was one of the biggest things in, in my life. In fact, it was the first concert that I went to. There was people all, all over. I mean, originally it, it was right here 
where the um, concert was. But the whole vibe of um, why I think that the um, Rock Against Racism right, was so powerful, it was for me that the um, unity of the uh, musicians together to fight racism. So the poem Rock Against Racism was really a reaction to talk about that time. And often these stories, these local stories are not documented. You, you hear the stories of the city, but you don't hear the voice of the people. So it wasn't just my voice and my memory. It was collective memory, collective narrative. I did write some songs, uh, one called Rock Against Racism, specifically. And it did feature the end of the show and raise a roof most of the time because the gigs being Rock Against Racism gigs, the end of the show, the, the, the folks got excited and they were all chanting and it was, it was good fun. Really. Good. I was uh, working as a medical records clerk at Leeds General Infirmary, but there was this one young man, his notes were this thick, and he died from a whole load of psychosomatic diseases. And when I found his diagnosis, the, the doctor actually diagnosed his death as homosexuality. The code was 302.0. So I made two of these badges, which just said 302.0, and I gave one to Tom Robertson. Tom used to wear this at his gigs. We once sent me a postcard from a gig in Chicago, which was signed by the entire Tom Robinson band, which said that a group of people had thrown T-shirts onto the stage in Chicago that said um, 302.0 across them. And he just said on this postcard, what in the world have you started, Paul? This massive international campaign had started as a result of highlighting that, and it, it succeeded in getting homosexuality removed from the International Classification of Diseases as a medical condition, but that um, originates in Leeds. When I went to work for National RA, one of the final acts we did was to sign a contract with Virgin to put out Rock Against Racism's Greatest Hits, which um, includes two bands from Leeds on it, which, um, which is Mikos and Gang of Four. Good achievement, it's good representation of what we did in Leeds. So the very final act of Rock and Racing on a national level was, was in Leeds, and that was the, the carnival in Pock Newton Park. It was never just music, it was the activism that was a, a central core of Rock and Racing. So from putting the second ever gig on in Leeds, two years before, to the final la last final gig of the movement as a whole, um, Leeds was at the, the heart of it. I believe Rock Against Racism did change a lot. It made a lot of the people more aware. It made me up my eyes politically about, you know, what's happening and who's involved rather than just a black and white issue. Whereas when you're younger, you just think, you know, white people hate black people and that's it. We're in this community and we have to live with everyone. So when you go out there and see all these people fighting your cause, you realise it's not a white black issue. It's a racist issue. There are certain things that happen, at least in this city, that is a reminder that as a people that we are one, we can learn from the past, so we could learn from 1981, we can learn from all those concerts, we can learn through that protest and we can learn through the way in which music, not just music but um, art and creativity can unite people together as one. Youth Rage, 1981. We never imagined it would happen again. The night rage burnt cars and shops. Right in a stone's throw away from my house? Six years later, raised up a passion set out the street like an arena for a bullfight with the Babylon. There was fire, fire, mm -hmm. Disturbed hearts smashed bricks through the smoky heat, exploded against discrimination, sus laws and racist attacks in these inner city streets now burnt to ash. Get your UB40 passport to collect the dough. Rock against racism. In our back to back and through terrace houses, working class black and white youth played snap. The sex pistols latched onto the white heat, graffitied Elizabeth's head, stuck two fingers up and spat on the Union Jack. We watched them pogo dancing up and down to the clash white riots of reggae snatched rhythms, while Maggie snatched milk brought recessions and the pole tax. 
And when the specials rocked against racism, well, they marched right past my street, up to Pot and Newton Park too. It was like a zebra crossing, black and white, black and white, black and white, as far as you can see.